Today we're going to be deep diving the College of Whispers, the Bard subclass, an incredibly flavorful and a subclass geared for social encounters. Let's jump into it. First we get Psychic Blades. Psychic Blades is pretty cool, but it does struggle in a few key ways. First of which is it directly competes with our Bardic Inspiration because it uses our Bardic Inspiration to be able to use it, which means we have to compare it to what else our Bardic Inspiration can do. So the question is 2d6 damage worth potentially defending a concentration check and the answer is maybe depends on the situation sometimes it's going to be come up but that's just a downside is that we do have to do those weighing calculations in our head the second is that it can only be used for a weapon attack and considering that whispered bards do not boost our weapon fighting abilities in any way it really forces us to use a suboptimal option for us to be able to use it because if we had it our way we'd probably take cantrips which are scaling instead of using a hand crossbow but this forces us to use the hand crossbow now the the psychic blades scale, but so do our cantrips. So although it looks like our psychic blades are scaling faster, and they do, it's less than you think because otherwise we'd be casting cantrips which also scale. So the damage scaling is less powerful than it initially looks. The third problem with it is that it requires both dex and charisma to get use out of. Charisma gives us more uses of psychic blades, whereas the dex makes it us more likely to hit so we can actually use them. So in order to get the most out of this feature, we have to invest in both or sacrifice one or the other. Personally, I take charisma over dex. Yes, we're going to miss more often, but we're going to be able to do it more often when we do hit. And we're still a bard, we still want the high charisma to be a good spellcaster. Now that the negative is out of the way, let's talk about some of the positive things. The easiest way to think about this feature is it's essentially sneak attack, and sneak attack's pretty good. It scales right alongside sneak attack. Although its increments are in different spots, it is always at sneak attack's damage whenever we make that increment jump. And it's a sneak attack that we can do without having to have advantage or having an ally nearby, we just need to hit. So in, a, in ways, it's more reliable than sneak attack damage. Also also consider that at level 5 we recharge our bardic inspirations on a short rest instead of a long rest which is a big buff it basically triples the amount of psychic blades we can use that's quite a few sneak attacks I often talk about how if a subclass is doing something different and probably not as good as the main class I'm still gonna go explore what that subclass is doing just because that's why I'm there it's flavorful it's interesting I don't care if it's suboptimal psychic blades is one of those cases that I'm probably going to be using more of my bardic inspiration on psychic blades than I am on support. That may be suboptimal, but it is more interesting to me. So that's what I would do personally. I'll touch more on that when we get to the build section. Also, at level 3, we get Words of Terror. Now, Words of Terror, we essentially speak to someone, and without them knowing, we attempt to make them either afraid of us or another person. And then if we enter combat with them or their allies in any way, it breaks. So mechanically speaking, this feature isn't that impressive. It takes a minute to just give them the Frightened Condition, and the Frightened Condition is pretty geared towards combat. It's not going to make a lot of sense in a, in a social situation. However, this is one of those features that is clearly meant to be roleplayed and played up. This is not meant to be a mechanical feature at all, and this is kind of a good DM test if you ask me. If your DM just makes this mechanical, okay, that's a red flag to me. I think that most DMs are going to look at this and be like, okay, let's play off the fact that they're now paranoid about this other person. And if your DM does that, this is a really interesting and cool feature because you can make allies be paranoid about one another. You can turn people against each other. You can manipulate. You can be that person who's in the court who's manipulating the court to your advantage. That is so in flavor for the College of Whispers. And if you're a DM, I highly recommend playing this up and not just making it a me mechanical feature. Level 6 brings Mantle of Whispers. This is our defining feature, if you ask me. This is a really unique infiltration ability. Essentially, we if we find a humanoid corpse, we can take its shadow as a bonus action and hold it until a long rest and we can do that once per short rest. So if we don't spend it and we have multiple short rests, we can actually collect up to three shadows that we can change as needed. Once you use it, it's done, but then you have a second and third disguise ready. Pretty cool. Now what makes this a very unique infiltration ability is the fact that we gain information from the slain humanoid that would sell us to everybody. We don't know their secrets, but we know how many people are in their family, how they're doing, how they'd answer questions. That's really the best way to look at it, how they would answer questions. Now how we lose this is that 
they have to complete an investigation check against our deception check, but we get a plus five to that. And it also incentivizes us to take expertise in deception as the College of Whispers to make our disguises really stick. This feature is genuinely beautiful in its flavor, but it does have some mechanical rubber clauses that make it so, depending on the campaign and depending on your DM, your mileage may vary. There's a rubber clause in the feature that says, you know enough information to pass yourself off as the person. Now, does that mean you know a language you didn't otherwise know? Because you have to pass off as a different language speaker. Does that mean you know it? Up to the DM. The feature also says nothing about whether or not your voice changes. Some DMs are going to say, yeah, the feature's clearly meant to help you infiltrate, and in order to do that, you have to sound like the person. It's fine. Have their voice. And then other people are going to say, hey, it's not specifically written. You have to figure out your own way to have your voice sound like theirs. Now, me personally, I lean towards leniency. This feature is clearly meant to allow College of Whispers bards to be able to infiltrate, and if I don't want to stop them doing that just because a single sentence wasn't written, I want them to be able to do what the feature set out to allow them to do. However, if your DM is more strict than I am, the actor feat is a good way to both round out your charisma and to make sure that you can change your voice as needed. This is a conversation worth having when you select the College of Whispers, just asking them how they're going to run this feature so you can do your build accordingly. Now all that out of the way, I will say that I think you can get more use out of this in a typical campaign than most people assume. How many times have you infiltrated a humanoid's dungeon, the hobgoblin's base, whatever it is, this is actually really good just to get a kill and then now you can transform to look like that hobgoblin and know the information they would know to pass themselves off and you can walk the party through. That's very common. Humanoid dungeons are very common. Humanoids are a very expansive list. So again, I think this gets less credit than it should for how useful it's going to be in a full term campaign. At level 14, we get a very powerful charm feature. I think arguably the strongest charm feature in the game. It's riskless. That's one of the big selling points of it is we just attempt it and it works or it doesn't. Either way, we don't piss anybody off. It's long term. It lasts for eight hours. It can be done in or out of combat. It's non-concentration, so the only way it breaks is if you literally attack that specific character. It says specifically that they will treat you as a great friend and trying to give you favors. They'll even help you in combat if they were already inclined to do so, which is unlikely, but it's there. So basically we're going to a dungeon, you see a guard out front, you cast this on them, and now you have someone who can literally lead you through the whole dungeon, tell you which direction is best, tell you where the traps are at. I think this is crazy good. I think one of the most underestimated features that is on College of Whispers, and I think that's because it comes late at level 14. Really underestimated feature, if you ask me. Fantastic. The community often calls the College of Whispers the weakest bard subclass, and is that fair? I would say in a social heavy campaign, definitely not. This, this offers a lot of things you can do in a social campaign that you couldn't otherwise do. Now, if it's just combat after combat or a dungeon crawl, then yeah, probably this is the weakest of the bard subclasses, but that doesn't mean it's weak. It's still fantastically powerful and is going to be perfectly viable for anyone. So I would strongly suggest that if you're filling the College of Whispers, don't worry what the community is saying about its power level. It's perfectly viable. Take it and have a good time. So how does playing a Whispers Bard change our playstyle? Well, first off, it kind of takes us away from being a support caster to being a single target damage striker. Not completely. It just kind of starts swaying us in that direction, but we still can do the Bard caster thing. Now we just minor in striking. We also have a much higher focus on deception and infiltration. And so if I'm going to be building my Whispers Bard, I'm going to do it like this. I primarily use our light crossbow. This gives us some much needed range, but still allows us to proc psychic blades from afar with some safety. And I'm going to proc psychic blades often. I would only give inspiration to my allies when it was truly a big deal. A truly massive skill check or a truly massive concentration that I will try and support on, but more often than not, I'm going to be using them to increase my damage. I would take expertise and stealth and deception to really enhance our infiltration and kind of our face deceptive deceiver type persona. If my DM were stingy about voices, I'm definitely taking the actor. Otherwise, I'm probably just bumping charisma as quick as possible. Maybe taking Fey Touched. We all know I love my Fey Touched. I would also consider multi-classing into three levels of Assassin Rogue. This will give us sneak attack and potentially auto crits with our Psychic Blades. So if we do get the drop on an enemy, not only do we get a sneak attack, we also get Psychic Blades damage, making it much more likely for us to kill them outright and be able to take their shadow and continue our infiltration. 
Furthermore, I think rogues are actually a pretty underrated subclass with full casters because we do get that bonus action hide, and so now we can cast spells like Hypnotic Pattern and so on, and then be able to bonus action hide to protect our concentration. But multi-classing with full casters is always a tough sell because we are pretty far behind when it comes to our spell casting, and this is no different, so I would do this with a grain of salt, and I definitely would go Bard 6 first because I want the Mantle of Whispers too badly to wait for it. I just think it's such a defining piece of our kit that I want it right away to be using for the rest of the game. So if I am going to do a three level dip, it's going to be after level six. Whisper's Bard really isn't mechanically perfect. I think we all know that, but I think it gets a worse rap than it deserves. It's still really good. And more importantly than that, I think it has some of, some of the most interesting and game-changing features for the Bard class. A lot of the Bard subclasses don't really change your playstyle, they just enhance it. This one does. And for these reasons, I think the Whisper's Bard stands tall among the other Bard subclasses classes. If you enjoyed this video, we have plenty others like it in our deep dive series. But before I let you go, I do have a joke for you. What do bards drop when defeated? Loot. With that, all I wish is for you to have a wonderful day, and I'll see you on the next one. Later.